Hey, welcome to part 9 of my procedural node series in Blender. Today we're going to take a look at creating this leaf texture here, and uh, it could definitely be improved upon. You know, if you're looking at it up close, there are some things that still look a little bit weird, but uh, it's a good jumping off point anyways if you want to try and make something like this for yourself and improve upon it. So let's take a look. So to set up our scene, let's start by hitting S, Z, and point 1, and that just divides this vertical dimension by 10. Hit Control A and apply that scale, then come over here to the Modifiers panel, and we're going to add a Bevel Modifier. Set these segments to 5, and then bring up the Sub menu and just hit Shade Smooth. View it from the top and turn on Rendered Mode, and I'm going to drag this over and add the Shader Editor on the left. Just like this. Let's start by bringing in a Voronoi texture, and we're going to change this to F2. I'm going to bring in a color ramp. You may remember what this looks like already if you watched my other video. It's just a bunch of uh, what are almost circles with a uh, certain amount of squash or stretch applied. You get these leaves, you get what are almost circles, and you get these line segments as well. Let me bring this a bit higher there. And then I'm going to highlight this Voronoi and hit Control T, and it brings up a texture coordinate and mapping node. And you want to make sure this is coming out of object into that mapping node. Then I'm going to duplicate this Voronoi and put it here, change this to F1, and change uh, this to be coming out of the distance there. I'm going to add in a mix RGB node and put it on this line and run the object into color 2 as well. And now I have a controller and this controls how much influence this Voronoi texture has on this Voronoi texture. If it's all the way to the right it has no influence and it's like this texture isn't even here and if it's all the way to the left it has total influence and it's a little bit too much. So let's set this at 0.9 which is a little bit of influence. We'll change this to 1.8. We'll change this to 8.2. The next step is I'm going to add some color to this image and to do that I'm going to put two more points on my color ramp. This first point I'm going to drop this way down to 0 0.04 and the second point I'm going to put that at 0 0.34. This black I'm going to move this to 0 0.67 and then this white I'm going to put this at 0.69. In this bottom value, I'm going to change this to kind of a light green color. This is going to be the center of our leaves. Then this second value this is going to be kind of a dark green color. So you can see it already appearing on the right. Uh, light green in the middle, dark green, and then a black border, and then white everywhere else still. If I was to move this white back, whoops. If I was to move this white back, you could see there's more of a, a black gradient going on around there. I just didn't want that so that's why I hugged it so close to that black value. The reason for my next step is I kind of wanted to break up the uniformity of these leaves and make that kind of cell pattern that you see. So I am going to duplicate this Voronoi texture and change this to distance to edge. Let's see what this looks like. It's kind of that cell shape but we want it way tinier. Let's change this to 40. Hit Control T and make sure this is coming out of object just like this. And I'm going to add in a noise texture along this vector line. Duplicate this mix and bring it down here and then just plug object into color 2. And we'll leave that at 0.9 and leave this texture as is. I think this looks pretty cool. So next we're going to add some color here as well. And we're going to use a color ramp to do it. Place this on the line right after the Voronoi and this black and white we're going to leave them where they are but we're going to change this white to kind of an olive color just like maybe something like this here. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to mix these two together and set this at 0.45, just like that. I'm going to come over here to the second texture and just turn down this brightness a bit. It helps this pattern disappear a bit more into the leaf, just like that. That looks pretty good. This is looking pretty good. Uh, next up, I wanted to make this middle part transparent. So I'm going to bring in a principled BDSF because I deleted mine and reset this view. This is just plugged into the base color. Then I'm going to bring in a transparent node here and uh, mix these two together. And then I'm going to plug something into this factor. I'm going to create another color ramp here and plug distance from that top Voronoi texture into there and change it from linear to constant. And what this does is it reduces any fall off. I'm going to set the second point to 0.645. So what I mean by that is if we have it like this and we had it at ease, there'd be a gradient here. But when we set it to constant, there's a very sharp line here. It goes right from black to white, and there's no drop off or fall off or whatever. So 
Anyways, this is what we're going to use to plug into our factor right here. Click on here, and it's not quite there. We have one more step uh, to get rid of this black here. We go over here to this color, or pardon me, material properties, and go to blend mode and change it from opaque to alpha clip. And now we have this transparency. One more issue though is that if we look at from this from the bottom, we can't see any light shining through, and it doesn't make any sense. You know, leaves aren't totally opaque. So let's change that. Let's add in a translucent node this time here. So translucent. We'll just put this down here. And we'll bring color into there, and we'll put in an add shader here as well, and just drop it on this line right after the principal BDSF, and plug uh, this output into that bottom input there. And now we have translucency. It looks a little bit more realistic. So at this point I still wasn't really that happy with the shape here. It just looks a little bit too rounded and uniform. And so I thought, you know, what if I put a noise texture on this line right here? You know, it, it changes it, but it, maybe it changes a little bit too much. So how would I ease it off? Well I did the same strategy that I used for this Voronoi here. I'm going to duplicate this mix texture and put it, put it right here and then run the object into color 2 just like that and now this is a controller for how much this noise affects everything else down the line so I'm going to set this at maybe 20 and then put this factor at 0.7 uh, I kinda like the look of that that looks pretty good obviously we could play around with that quite a lot but I just wanted to break up those edges and that uniformity a little bit hey that's it we're done I'm just gonna quickly show you how you might use this you know texture so far. It might not be super obvious and I kinda had to play around with it to get a good result so I'm just gonna hide this for a second and uh, you have to have sapling tree generation uh, add-on enabled to do this next part I'm gonna do. It's just a shortcut. I don't want to build my own tree so I'm just gonna import one here and scale it all the way down so it kinda looks like a shrub here just like that and uh, I'm gonna make a new material just make it brown just like this here and now I'm going to bring in an icosphere and you could bring in a UV sphere but it wouldn't work as well for this because I'm going to do some displacement and displacement works a lot better if you have uh, the same size faces you know you don't want small faces and large faces so I'm just kinda moving these around these are all the same object as well just means I don't have to make the same displacement twice I can just do it once and it'll apply it so uh, let's try this out here uh, that looks pretty good so far just move that in a bit and I'm going to hit control 2 and that makes a subdivision surface modifier at level 2 there and then add a displacement modifier and come down here and hit new and come to here where you hit this button it brings up the texture panel and I'm going to hit clouds and uh, already we can kind of see uh, not a bad result you know let's go ahead and change this to our material here and you know I like the look of flat shading a bit better but you know it's super fast and already it doesn't look too bad um, you know, this could definitely be something in the background, something low poly, you know, let me move that down a bit. Thanks for watching.